Cowboy Way, the, the Cowboy Jubilee here. You are. You know, and it's, it's an honor. We, you and I met actually over in Fort Worth. We did. My first time in Fort Worth. I got to meet you. By the way, it's James Culpepper, by the way, from Florida, right? That's Virginia. We, Virginia. Yeah, you're a few states up north from Florida, but you're well, on don't the, you work down in Florida? Nope. nope. I got, nope. And you, everything's Virginia. Everything's in Virginia. Oh, really? Lived in Boston for a while, but Virginia's my hometown and where I live now. Oh, so let me ask you this. Now, you told me you work for a hotel. I do. And you're a manager of a hotel. I'm, a, I'm a, one of the managers there. One of the managers. Yep. Yeah. And so they give you this time off? To... Well, it, it takes a little conniving. Yeah. A little bribing. Right. But, yeah, my boss, I hope that's over me. Uh, and exactly what did you tell me? How many Bob Fuller pictures you gave yeah, away? Yeah, I, I had to set her up with a little Bob Fuller memorabilia to get her to oh, give me some time off. Okay, yeah. We try well, to I keep knew it. Bob was good for something. He is, I tell you. <laughs> if he can get me out of work, I'm all for it. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Absolutely. But anyway, we were all together over there in Fort Worth. That was a Fort wonderful Worth. event. My first time in uh, Fort Worth, and I got to meet you. How great was that? Yeah, well, that, well, you know what? I'll tell you, that could have been a downfall. <laughs> <laughs> it anyway. was great. Bob was getting an award there, getting a star yeah, on the, right. the side yeah. vault there. And so, we got to go look at it. We did. Yeah. It was great. Uh, actually, I didn't see it that day. I went back later. You remember my I saw friends? the pictures back. Yeah, me yes. and Sandy went. My friend Sandy, she was yep. with us that day. I remember that. And we went, and uh, we... You know, we went over and looked at the stars. Well, before that, I'll back it up a little bit. That day, we, we went over and visited with our friend Buck Taylor. We did. Yes. That was fun. And yeah, all fun. Always that was fun. great. Buck's, yeah, Buck, always, Buck's a great guy. Great He's guy. a great guy and a great talent. And great. Oh, and a great artist. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of people don't realize he's an artist. Yeah, I know. And the guy has stuff. a whole new career after yeah. acting. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, on interviews, I found out from him was that while he was working on Gunsmoke, he went to college, studied art. During he Gunsmoke? Art me, during. I didn't know that, yeah, see? He, he studied art in high school, went on and went to college, studied art. I was art. wondering how he picked it up, because he's, he's not just amateur, he's no, pro. He's a, he's a pro. That stuff is amazing. Yeah. I mean, he, he is an amazing I a, artist. I, I have a few of the, the uh, prints. I can't afford to. Can't afford. <laughs> uh, I wish I could too. Uh, I was like, well, it's nice I, looking at I, them, yeah, right? I can't afford those, <laughs> but I, I have a few prints and everything. And so whenever I want to impress a young lady. You just tell us the original? No what, I, <laughs> no, no. what I do is I get her an autograph poster from Buck Taylor. Whoa. And then I tried to impress her again, right? Yeah. And I got her an autograph picture. Of Bob Fuller. Uh, now, that's the end. That's the end game there. That's it. You got him. That just wraps it up and puts a bow on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope so. If you want a war woman, forget the wine, forget the dancing, forget Bob Autograph Fuller. Bob Fuller. Fuller. Yeah, yeah. There you go. With the autograph. Yeah. That's where I learned all my moves, Bob. Is that? Jess Harper. I, fo I follow. Bob but I'm. Yeah. But I'm no match at all. That's why I'm still single. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one Jess Harper, right? right? There's the only one Jess Harper. And no, I, I tell people that, you know, um, people talk about that. They, they can talk all they want about Elvis impersonators or, or James Dean lookalikes or whatever. There was only one. You know, there's only one James Dean. There was only, only one. Elvis. There's only one. A lot Robert of impersonators, Fuller. but only one. And I don't even know of an impersonator, Robert Fuller. Because you can't do it. I don't think so. Can't do it. It's very unique. It's unique, it's, yeah. one of a kind. Yeah. 
He's a good man, and not only a good actor, but a good man. Oh, so. he is, and he's so great to his fans. He is, absolutely. So I know you do a lot of volunteer work with him, and I think it's wonderful. I and love it. You and uh, what, that outlaw, Tony Gill? Tony Gill, yeah, they haven't caught him yet, but we've been hiding him out here and there, hey, so uh, his uh, wanted uh, posters are still up. Really? Yeah, but uh, we well, keep your head, well, and he keeps I, us busy. I heard they got him <laughs> under the name of, uh, what was it, Tumbleweed? Tumbleweed Gill? Tumbleweed Gill, <laughs> yeah. It is. And, uh, but he, Tony's a good guy. He's, uh, he's just a misunderstood. Misunderstood? <laughs> <laughs> he is misunderstood. He's a good guy, but he's yeah. misunderstood. But, well, uh, you know, they, you know he, he's, he's done a great job but working with you guys and working with Bob and helping uh, coordinate everything and uh, I know he coordinated that whole thing we were at uh, in Fort Worth. Yeah, I don't I don't know how he does it to be honest. I know uh, especially when he lives in England half the year he lives here in the states. Yeah. But even when he's home in England he's busy putting these festivals together and yeah. this year we got 3 in a row. And yeah. He's working on all three at one time while one's going on, like right now. Yeah. I don't know how he does it, but uh, and they're getting ready to go, but to Tennessee or somewhere. Or uh, we got Memphis Film Festival next yeah. month, and then is that Laramie, the one, 60th Lar anniversary, yeah. the following, and then we got Williamsburg in November. So if you folks are in that area, you got to go. go. You got to go. You, you got to go. go see him. You not opportunity to see Bob Fuller is like one in a million. You got to go. Absolutely. Now, is, is, is his teammates going to be with him? His uh, most of us will be there, as far as I know. Uh, all the ones you saw today, I believe, are going to be there. Yeah. So uh, we we shift up in a lot of the duties. We got Mary out of Alabama this time, <laughs> and uh, I think she may be coming to Memphis. So well, uh, I know y'all have a good time. So. Mary's amazing, but we got some great volunteers here, and we're, we're we love working with Bob. We consider it an opportunity, not just work. It's an well, opportunity. It is. It's an opportunity. Not only that, you get to meet his fans. We do, and that's half the fun of it. Yeah. You see these people all around the country see coming the expression in. expression on their faces when they meet him. Absolutely. Yeah, that is. I mean, it's priceless. That's a charm. It's priceless. Yeah. I mean, some of them, you, they've been waiting years to meet him. So yeah. uh, we had a woman today that was watching it in prime time an older woman, and she finally made it here to see him after watching it on TV when it originally ran, brought her daughter and granddaughter, who were Robert Fuller fans, and all three generations were here to get their pictures signed. So it just keeps on going. Totally amazing. It is. Yeah. And even after we're all long and gone, I believe he, his name's going to live on. It know? is. He's got a legacy. Right now, he's got a legacy, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. But anyway, it's amazing. He, he's given so much of himself, you know to the fans. He and does, and if you ever watch him when he's around children, it's amazing. Or well, I saw that picture, you probably put it up, but him with the little boy or whatever coming in, you know, and and he, he, he was leaned over talking to the little yes, boy. Yes, yeah. he, he does a lot of that. Yeah. And military, he's very big on veterans. Oh, I know that. Uh, absolutely, he's a big, big, well, he's, a, he's veteran. a veteran. He's a veteran himself. He's a veteran. I love seeing veterans come in and talk to him, and he spends a lot of time with them. Well, he was an a Army man, he told me. Absolutely. Kobe talked about the hard ride. Right. And he said, well, I played a Marine in that, but I was actually in the Army. It's, yeah. You know, these are his words. I mean, right. he, and so, I mean, and Sinai Commando, that's another great one that he was in. I haven't seen that. you got to catch it. Good movie. Great movie. Yeah. Well, I saw The Hard Ride. I really That's enjoyed. a great movie. I loved it. If you're not, you got to get ready to cry in that movie. Yeah, so, uh, the ending will break your heart. It will. It, it was will an ending. I wouldn't, I wouldn't respect it. We not ain't telling. We're not telling. We're not giving it away. Not so. giving the movie away. And I'll tell you what. Uh, have you seen uh, Sundown with uh, me and your I've buddy? seen some clips of it. I have not watched the whole series. But you're pretty good. Oh, thank you. Well, I you're pretty good now. I was with my with my buddy Tony now. T Tony, you know what surprised me? Tony's a good actor. It, it, well, let me, hey, where well, did that me, come let from? Me, let me share this story. I think you will enjoy this. With Tony, when we were making Sundown, filming mm -hmm. Sundown with Bob Terry. Bob Johnny Terry, Terry, great man, great Don man. Don Reynolds, God bless his soul. And there we were, making this thing, and we were up at the bar, and Tony looked at me and he goes, I've never acted before. Well, you couldn't <laughs> have proved it by me. 
I'm telling you. That was his first. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't, didn't know. And and uh, we do a scene, and I go, oh my God. And I, I've been in, I've acted in a lot of films. And yeah, television. you've been around a little while. Yeah. 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 And I did 40 years of theater. So there you go. And uh, so there we were talking. And, and you know, when you've been around it long enough, you know when somebody is good. Or they can't act. You catch it you immediately. Can, immediately. Yes. And I'm going, this guy is good. And he's telling me, no, no way. I'm thinking in my head. So anyway, <laughs> we exchanged phone numbers. We became good friends. We had never really knew each other till then. Oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah. That's great. And, and a week later, my phone rings. And it's Tony Gill calling me from England. And he says, James, I have something to tell you. Uh oh. Usually, usually, there's no good ending to that. So you know that, right? Yeah. I, I, okay. You know. <laughs> he says, James, I uh, have something to tell you. I said, What's that? He says, You know, I told you that I've never acted before. I said, Yeah. He says, Well, the truth is, Bob Fuller coached me. Really? That's. But these are his words. And, it, and it actually rubbed off on Tony, which is hard to believe. That's it's hard to believe that he learned. <laughs> he, but, you know, he had a good, uh, my only comment was you you had a great teacher. He had the best. Yeah, I don't think he had a great teacher. Hey, especially for a Western flick, Yeah. you don't get any better than Bob Fuller. Yeah, so, true. Yes. And then, then on top of that, you have to look at who taught Bob Fuller. You know who is acting. I, I I absolutely do. And Richard. Have gun will travel the have, man himself. Have Richard Boone. Richard Boone. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so how amazing is that? Uh, oh. I'm First, picturing Bob getting that card when he went in there to get learn. Yeah. And he hands out that little have gun will travel card. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and, but then again, I saw. I was. Well, I don't know who. I know you post a lot of wonderful stuff. But I don't know who posted this, but I had never seen, I saw, I had a friend of mine, his name was Dennis Rucker, and he was one of the regulars on Heck Ramsey. Really? With Richard Boone. Yeah. And somebody posted a clip of Heck Ramsey with Bob Fuller. And I didn't recognize him. The only way I knew it was him, I recognized the voice. That was it? That was it. Because <laughs> he had a mustache on. And I'm not used to Bob with a mustache. No, no, no. And yeah. he had a mustache on, and he was off a distance. Right. Wasn't close up. A wonderful scene between him and Heck Ramsey, him and Richard Boone. I said, well, well, here's the teacher and the student. That's How, yes. how great is that? That's wonderful. I think it's Sometimes wonderful. I think... When it's all wrapped up, sometimes the, the, the student becomes the teacher. Sometimes. Sometimes that happens. Well, Richard Boone was a wonderful, I thought, actor. I think he was a great actor. Yeah, a wonderful and, actor. And he did some great, amazing things. And from according to what Bob told me, was that Richard Boone was a great teacher. Now, that's, that, that's amazing when you think about it, though. Usually you're a good actor, but how good are you teaching it to somebody else? Well, some I mean, people well, some people are a good teacher and can't act. That's true. That, that so happens. when you can't do it yourself, you teach it. Yeah. Well, they say, <laughs> they that, say that. They say if you but can't that do wasn't it, the you teach. Exactly, but that's not the case with Richard Boone. No, he could. So, he, he backed absolutely. it up. He but I, th up. I think you had a lot of good raw talent in Robert Fuller, though. Yeah. He came in there with the talent, and Richard Boone just did some molding. And Bob Fuller's word. He said to me, he said, Richard Boone told me, he said, I can make you a good actor. And Bob Fuller told me, I thought he was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Bob That sounds is. like Bob. And, and, and he said, well, looking back on it, the rest of it's history. It is. It is history. Hey, and history is still being made. It's still being Look made. Look at us here today. Yeah. And I saw a, a small clip uh, of Bob. Well, I worked on Walker. Yes. Yeah, I worked on Walker. And great, great 12, show. 
and showed him my buddy over there. Look at him. He worked on Walker. And he looks like somebody who would have worked on yeah, Walker. Yeah, he worked on Walker, didn't he? <laughs> and so he worked on Walker. And uh, uh, I, I don't tell nobody I said this about him. But Dean Redding is a great actor. Oh, and yeah. uh, so look at him. He's pulling out his rope. Hey, and, he and, worked with you. Well, we He's got to be good, right? Actually, really, we actually met. A lot of people don't know this, but I actually met my partner there on uh, uh, in 1980, right, Dean? 80, 81. He's like, yeah, okay. He's leaving me. He's leaving me hang. He's like. He's like, yeah, okay. Oh, he's blocking me. <laughs> he's blocking me. it. We worked on a movie called Painted Hero with uh, Dwight Yoakam. Really? And Peter Fonda and starring Dean Redding. Uh, and I doubled Yeah, he doubled Really? Dwight I could see it. I could see it. Yeah. And, well, of course, Dwight's a lot better looking. Well, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, he's still got it. Yep. He's got it. He's got it. He's <laughs> I got it. But we yeah. Won't and, uh, but anyway, no, I love the movie. But I got to tell you a funny story. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, here's a funny here's story. Here's a funny one. You sound like Bob now. All right, here's, here's a funny story about that. I got, to, got there, and they put us all in this Winnebago. You know, we were the big star. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we, were, we were actually uh, extras in the movie, okay? Right. So... Anyway. But shh, you don't say that part. What? That you were actually, you just said we were in this movie with. Uh, yeah, I know, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm being honest. And so we were extras in the movie. And so uh, they put us in this Winnebago and a whole bunch of it. And we had all worked in movies and television together. Everybody knew everybody, you know. And so we're all there now going, you're working with Dwight today, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, he's horrible. Terrible. Really? That, now they're telling me. They're this. telling you this. They're telling me. Okay. This. I said, I was so nervous when I walked in the door, and I don't intimidate easy. No, but that got you a little nervous. I was a little nervous <laughs> because here I am working in a major motion picture with this star, and they tell me he's hard to deal with. I walked in the door. I'm standing there for about ten minutes, and all of a sudden I turned around, and here come Dwight. Walked over, said, "Hey, I am Dwight Yoakam. Nice to meet you." They were just trying to. Uh, they were. They were messing with you. They were messing with me. <laughs> and he uh, seems like he's a great guy. I've he, never met him. So uh, actually, really working on the movie, I, because I only knew him from the movie. Uh -huh. You know, and there was also Peter Fonda. Who he and I Who's became amazing. Pals. We became pals. That's great. He's a good. Well, I've never met him, but I like his work. So. Well, I'll tell you what it was. He is, without a doubt, a walking encyclopedia on film. Really? He knows film. He knows the making of movies. He knows how to make them. He knows how to direct them. He knows how to write them. If you ever get an opportunity to see a movie called The Hired Hand. The Hard Hand. The Hired. Hired. Oh, Hired Hand. Yes. I haven't heard of that. I have to pull Oaks. that one up. Yeah, pull it up. It's a wonderful movie. He, he, I think he wrote it or co-wrote it and directed it really? and starred in it with Warren Oates. It's a good movie. I love it. I'm taking now, your word for it because your word so far has been great. Everything you well, told me to check I, out. Well, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell you right now is I think it's a... I Are you in it? No. Okay, is that why it's good? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Add, add, add to the story about Painted Hero. Right. Now, somebody gave me an advanced copy of it, the VHS copy. And I looked at it. I'm in it. Scene I'm in is in it. And so one day I was going, I was getting my glasses done. It's Sears and the Sears eye thing. Oh, okay. And so I walked walk through and I walked right by a, video, uh, a DVD rack. And there's a movie. You know how you get these movies now, four or five movies in a package. Yep, absolutely. And there was Painted Hero. Right in there. Right in there. I grabbed that thing. I went <laughs> paid for it. I said, I can't wait to get home to see this. You know, because I'm on DVD. You're in it. I'm in it. I went <laughs> home. I got, uh, my wife and I were there. And I said, hey, we're going to watch this movie now. I put it in. I was cut out of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> did you out. Now, how about that for honesty? That's, oh, man. That's honesty. Well, you were in it. I was so, in it. So when you tell people that you were in it, I, I was in it. Was. Was. I, I, I didn't out. say I was in the final product. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I thought it was a good movie anyway. So I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Painted Hero is a 
wonderful little film. I mean, it's not Gone with the Wind. Oh, uh, yeah. It's still, I like, it's still yeah. worth watching. Check it out. Yeah, do that. And uh, so, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. And, uh, but anyway, I'll tell you what. I think we talked bad enough about Tony Gill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say again, Tony's a very talented guy. Yeah. And he's... He's amazing with multitasking, and you and you cannot discount what he contributes to Robert Fuller and the events that he attends. Well, I'll tell you what, because it, it's an amazing feat what he does. I he mean, has really an is. amazing story. He does about meeting Bob. Yeah, it is. It, it is. I an mean, Bob, uh, story. Tony was a fan. Yeah, he was, a and fan. ended up being one of Bob's best friends, if not his best friend. Yeah, so if it's, not, uh, I, I'll tell you what, they're, they're, they're closer than brothers. It is. He yeah. is, and uh, that's See, been a great like pleasure. Me and my friend knowing. here, we're closer than thieves. Are you? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we steal from each other. You steal from each other all the time. Don't pay it back. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, James, thank you so much for hey, coming. Hey, it was a pleasure, and I'm glad to see you oh. again here, and we're going to see you on the next round, all right? right? And we're going to post this. We're going to get it posted. You get to all see right. it. All right. That you sounds know, great. All right. Thank you very much for taking time. One good thing about Fort Worth, I got to meet you. I think. I, Is that the good part about it? Well, or, I'll tell you what. I, I, I got to be able to spend more time with Bob, but you, I got to meet you, though. I got I tell you what, I had ice cream in Fort Worth with Sally once. Really? Ice cream. Sally Bonson. Yes. Really? My oh friend. yes, that's right. When Sally came in off the flight that time, yeah, y'all. Right. Yes. Yeah. Sally Bonson, an amazing girl. One wonderful of my best. Wonderful lady. Wonderful lady. Well, we've had dinner a couple of times. Me and her and Tony and a few people and, uh, and Tony's Jennifer. Daughter. Yeah. Bob's wife was with you. I well, think, one time. Well, another time we all went to dinner at. Uh, and it, it was was it me Chili's and Bob. or something? No, but we went to Chili's. Chili's. And one time we went to a steakhouse out here on 35. Mm -hmm. I, I got my directions wrong. I think it's back that way. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you made it though. We've had some great times, and uh, I know Tony's busy and Bob's busy, and and th that gang is busy, and and we respect that. And and but we'll we'll catch them next. Week. Next Absolutely. Trip. Right. Well, Thank it was a pleasure. You. Thank you, sir. And we'll talk again. My honor. And my honor. My really? Honor. Absolutely. Buddy, I enjoy having you here. And now I might, we can just get rid of these guys, and if they ever cut off the microphones. Honest? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I, actually, I think they're asleep. I I mean, they hey, well, wake up. Are looking at pretty girls. Yeah. Oh, oh, is that why they keep looking behind oh, them? Both of them. Yeah, see? They, they you know, the we're up here, the, not the we're girls ready. out here. We're gone. We're out. We cut. We're saying good night. Goodbye. Howdy folks, my name is Jim Hoff Powell, and you can usually catch me on Crossroads Live with my good friend and sidekick Sylvia Hara. But today I'm out here with Danny Boy, out, out here at the Crossroads Ranch. My request is this, have you signed up to be an organ donor? And have you talked this over with your loved ones so that they know your desires? That is a gift that only you and God together can give to those in need. So, till we meet again, good luck, God bless, and we'll see you at the crossroads. Let's go, Dan. All right, and welcome to Ardmore, Oklahoma, where it's the Cowboy Way, Cowboy Jubilee. And I'm sitting here with a brand new friend, Mr. Terry Bomar. That's Did I get it. it right? We got it right. right yeah. Terry we Bomar. just met today. That's you know, it. Well, we met yesterday, actually. Right. We're and, having a lot of fun out well, here. Oh, we're having a great time. <laughs> I'll tell you, this young man right here is so full of talent. Not only are you a writer, right? you're an actor. Yeah. You're a minister. Right. And you were a manager. I was a manager. Yeah. And that was that was pretty a big trick because I yeah. was managing Grizzly Adams. Yeah. So, and, well, let me ask you this. Now, you worked as an actor. Now, did he get you work? Well, we did a lot of work together. Okay. And there's a few things that I did. But I, I like doing the work behind the camera. Yeah. I, I wrote a screenplay. We were working on films together. And, and so I was more of a producer. Yeah. But I did act in a few places. Yeah. Well, he, now I'll be honest with you, and uh, because you're a minister, and right. I, I don't want to get on the wrong side of the man upstairs. <laughs> uh, I had uh, the, uh, 
I never got to see the show, Grizzly Adams. Right. But I've heard about it. Because, I, and, and say, oh, why didn't you watch the show? It's, I didn't get to see the show because I was doing theater at night. Right. And those were my theater years. And, uh, and so, you know, what was it back in the 70s? It was, it was back in the 70s. And what they were doing is they, they made a film that was about the life of the real life Grizzly Adams. Because there really was a Grizzly Adams who had pet bears yeah. in the woods and friends with the Indians and that kind of thing. But it wasn't quite as tame as the TV show yeah. that came out. Oh, really? It was yeah. pretty wild. Huh? It was pretty wild. The real Grizzly Adams is a little bit different than the one you saw on TV. Oh, really? I, I, I want to get to see that show. I, yeah. I would like to. Yeah. So it was a hit. They made a movie about it. Dan was really the one who brought life to it. Yeah. And, and Dan had that personality. And so what you see on TV with Grizzly Adams, that's really Dan Haggerty. Yeah. Because he had that kind of personality on and off the screen. What, what kind of personality was the real Grizzly Adams? <laughs> Not a very funny oh, guy. The, the, the one they made the film about. Yeah. Well, he was a little more rough and tumbling than uh, a lot of people want yeah. to point. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, yeah. They have him in the TV show and in the movie where, you know, he didn't trap animals, didn't hurt animals or whatever, but back in the... Back in the 1800s, you had to eat to live, and so right. it was a little so, bit more rough and tumble yeah. than they well, made it on the show. Well, them, them steaks you buy at the store came from somewhere. <laughs> That's right. That's where they <laughs> Yeah. So tell me, uh, I found interesting about you telling me you're a minister. Right. Well, that's how it happened. I, I actually been a minister my whole life, Yeah. and I started a charity called Young Adventurers, which helps kids. And then I was looking for a national spokesperson, and I ended up with Doug McClure. Okay. And I hired Doug McClure to be our spokesperson. But then the very next year, Doug passed, passed away. away. Yeah, okay. I was able to pray with Doug before he passed away. It was a really great time you know, to be able to pray with him. But then somebody said, why don't you try Dan Haggerty? And I told him, I said, I'm like you. I didn't watch the show. Yeah. And so he, he, they said, well, that doesn't matter. So Dan came down to Sportsman's Lodge and met me and about five minutes, Dan Haggerty and me became close friends. Oh yeah. And so I hired him to be our spokesperson for Young Adventurers. Yeah. And then in about a month, we were became fast friends. And then he asked me to manage him. And for the next 20 years, I managed Dan Haggerty. Oh really? Sure did. And so that meant getting in personal appearances, getting parts in movies, television shows. Yeah, we got you know we got personal appearances. We got him uh, endorsement deals. I helped do some film stuff. I wrote him a screenplay on what was going to be a new film to bring him back as Grizzly Adams. Oh, and, really? uh, so we were working on that when Dan passed away. Wow. And Dan died back in 2016. Yeah. He died January 15th. I remember reading him. Yeah. yeah. He was yeah. my closest friend, and I think about him every day. God love you, Dan. Yeah. 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 Well, we're thinking about you, Dan. Uh, He's probably up there watching us right He's now. watching it. He's watching because Dan was not a choir boy, and I've been a minister my whole life, so we had a lot of discussions back and forth. So how did that relationship go, man? It, it, it you, was, you were always trying to convert him over? I did, and I was always working on him, and he was always working on me. He oh, was trying, to, yeah. Uh, he was trying to get you down the dark side. No, not really, but he wouldn't. He was always questioning me about everything. Oh yeah. So well, we had a lot of great conversations. Well, and, that is true. That there's a lot of people who are say not believers. Right who question everything about it. Well, you know, he was raised Catholic, and so he had some issues with that when he was young. And so we had a lot of deep discussion. He, but he was a spiritual guy, and I can honestly say that I led him to the Lord before uh, he passed away. We that's, prayed many times wonderful. together, and uh, he still wasn't a choir boy. He had his bumps and bruises, and, yeah. uh, and so... <laughs> He was a little hard to handle sometimes. Well, we all have our little bumps and bruises somewhere down the line. That's yeah, it. But everybody he, does. I mean, you know, so we can't be critical of that. No, you know? man, he was a great guy. Well, there's nobody perfect. No. You know. There was one that's perfect, and that's why we well, need Jesus. Well, they nailed him to a cross. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, and, uh, but, no, I, I just really, uh, I, I, am, I met him. I said hello to him, but we never... His table, if you were there in McKinney that year, 
He always had people around him and wanting autographs. Well, that's what I tell people. He was really an icon. He was the one. He, his personality is what made the Grizzly Adams TV show. Yeah. Because he had that personality. In five minutes, you'd think he was his best friend. And what years did that show run? It went in the, in the middle to late 70s. Mm -hmm. And it really, com when you combine the movies and the TV show and, and the follow-ups, it lasted over a span of everything together, about yeah. six or seven years. But it was iconic, and his role was iconic. And he was a... <laughs> And he was an icon himself, just as a, like you'd think of John Wayne, you think of Dan oh, Haggerty, same way. But he was that kind of guy. He, and, and he was a funny guy. I, t I always told him, I said, he didn't have any problem bending the truth and pushing you a little bit. I yeah. said, but that's where we ended up barking at each other and having fun. We were always laughing, always Yeah, up. well, that is really great. Really was. So tell me about your book. Well, I wrote two books. Uh, well, I wrote two books on Dan. I wrote this book on Dan, Dan Haggerty, the man I knew. Yeah. And it was really about the last year of his life and, uh, and the things that happened. So I included a lot of the fun stuff, the, the fights and the laughs that me and him had together, and, and then a little bit of the sad stuff of how he passed away. And, and the last thing he ever said to me on this earth was, I love you, man. Hey. And, and the last thing I ever did with him was pray with him before. But that was the last thing I did. You can take that to the bank. You take it to the bank. Take it to the bank. And then I wrote other books. I wrote Footsteps of the Shepherd. It's about the 23rd Psalm. and Because I'm still a minister. I preach all over the world. Right. And you were telling about putting in schools or churches around? Yeah, we just started a school in Kenya, Africa. And we started it in January. And we've got a bunch of kids there in school right now. Oh, wonderful. That's yeah, great. Yeah, sure did. And, uh... Well, where, where do you get your, t do they have, like, college down there where people go to co uh, school no, teachers? No, this is, this is really in a, in a small village. It's a very impoverished area. So it's really a, we try to catch them in kindergarten age, and we put them in school and give them uniforms and give them an opportunity to get a good start. So it's usually right now from kindergarten to the third or fourth grade uh -huh. right now, and then we'll go from there. So the school teachers... The school teachers, they're trained. Yeah. And so we work with pastors there that we can trust, and they help us locate schools. And we work through a pastor, Daniel, down there in Kenya, yeah. Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so, amazing. And in the meantime, I preach there. I preach in Bulgaria and Norway, Sweden, England, and we have a lot well, of fun. Now, well, let me ask you this. Is there a language barrier for you? There is. A lot of times we go, and, and I have to preach, and I have to wait on the interpreter, and you're right. And in Africa, I had to wait on two different interpreters because he had to preach from English to Ibu and then Ibu to another dialect. And so it had two different interpreters there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a nice, it's an interesting ride. And then when Dan was alive, we'd go to all the cowboy shows. We'd sign autographs and pictures and fuss and fight and joke and cut up and have friends. Yeah. It's a great, it's, it's been great. Well, when you met him, was, it, was the beard always there? Or was he always, did you ever see him without the beard? I personally never saw him without the beard, but he's always had the beard. There was a time when he cut it off for charity. There was another time when somebody uh, spilt a, a flaming drink on him and caught his beard on fire. He had to cut it off there. Okay. And uh, so those were the only two times, and, uh, but we were always together, always. Well, let's show you a book, and I want, I want you to tell us where people can get this, how they can get your book. All right, there's the book. And they can get the book at terrybomar.com. That's T-E-R-R-Y-B-O-M-A-R.com. Right. And it, you'll see that book, several books right there, terrybomar.com. Every Dan fan needs one, right? Yeah. If you're a Dan <laughs> fan, you need that you book. You need that you need book. book. I'll tell you, that is wonderful. I think you're doing a marvelous job, and thank you for taking time to come be here with us and and spread your message. You well, know. I sure appreciate that. I, yeah. I appreciate the opportunity. You're definitely a man of God, and I appreciate you very much. All right, man. God bless you. God thank you bless very you, much. man. All right. God, I thank you for being here. And uh, I have a friend of mine. I think you need to pray over. He's sitting right there. And uh, we, we, and he needs help. <laughs> but, but do you do any psychiatry work? Well, uh, I did work with Dan for, so I know how to, I had to deal to deal with crazy people. I'm only kidding, folks. I'm, 
Thank you very much. All We're right. going to see you down the road. Thank God you, buddy. bless you. All right. Good to see you. Today, I'm out here with my pal, Danny Boy, and we have a message for you from the American Lung Association. If you don't smoke, don't start. And if you do smoke, find a way to stop. Now, we know that it's not easy, so check with your doctor. He'll be the first one who'll be glad to help show you the way. Now, for a better quality of life and a longer life, stop smoking today. So, for me and Danny, to all of you, good luck, God bless, and here's hoping we see you at the crossroads. All right, welcome back to the Cowboy Jubilee in Ardmore, Oklahoma, and I'm sitting here with a young lady I met a couple years back down in Gene Autry, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. But ain't too far over there. Right. A couple cotton fields over, right? <laughs> yes, sir. And, uh, oh, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Well, I'm Thank just a pleasure to this, be here. Thank you for taking this time to uh, visit with us here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> and uh, must have been something in the coffee. Probably uh, was. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so tell me about your work. I know you do sculpture work. I do. I come from Bridgeport, Texas, which is about 45 miles northwest of Fort Worth, like you're going up to, to uh, Wichita Falls. And uh, I have a little gallery there. I teach kids how to do art on Wednesdays and the Teaching rest of the time. Kids, huh? Yes, sir. I got what some, was your youngest student? Seven years old. Well, actually, they got <coughs> brothers and sisters, so I got some fives in there, but I usually start them at seven. Yeah. Before that, they're more about quantity than quality, you know. Yeah. So. Well, what do you start them out with? They start out making a little horse, dog, or a giraffe. That's usually their first three choices. Yeah. Then after that, they can make pretty much anything they want. Yeah. So. So what is there a secret to doing this? I mean, that, or just, just well, play with it till you get it right. No, the biggest teachers having the biggest secret is having the right teacher. You know. Oh, well, maybe not. No, using the right clay and the armatures and those kids' imagination, they can create anything. If you give them a good armature of a giraffe, all they got to do is cover that with clay and they'll have a giraffe. It might be so a little is that animated. When the best imagination is when you're a kid. Oh, yeah, you got to develop it then. That's the best time. I've got an uh, 11 year old who just took best of show at our local art show, and uh, he, he did a uh, dock of gun smoke. At 11 years old, and I've had people recognize it, so that's pretty awesome. Well, I love the sculpt. I uh, think you did a Buck Taylor, you know. You know I know Buck. Yes. You know? And uh, he's a friend of ours, and we've had him on the show several times. He is an yeah. awesome person. Him and Goldie oh, both are just a delight. Wonderful. And what an honor that was to have him ask me to do his bust. Yeah. I, I was shaking in my boots, just so you know, but I yeah. got her done. Uh, I, I noticed some wonderful pictures. You Thank have you. One of the thing from Buck and the one from Gunsmoke. The picture yes. from Gunsmoke. And uh, you know, wonderful, wonderful man. You know. I also have a Ardmore, Oklahoma cowgirl in there. Yes, you told me about her. Uh, she's Florence Hughes Randolph, and her and her cousin, if I have the story right, and I think I do, um, from, they bought out a circus and turned it into Princess Mohawk's Wild West Show and Hippodrome. And in uh, all, of course, now we've got all these computers and stuff where you can go to the library and look up stories about yeah. that. And what's her name again? Florence Hughes Randolph, but uh -huh. she performed in the, in the Wild West Show as Princess Mohawk. The, the, uh, I've got a picture in there, and it shows Princess Mohawk's Wild West Show and Hippodrome. Do you know what a Hippodrome is? I have no idea. A Hippodrome's everything from a little ball you can drive a motorcycle around in real oh, fast. Oh, yeah, I've seen To those, the great yeah. big old wall, like a big old bowl, big enough. I have a picture of her in a convertible, and she's the passenger. And right on top of her is a motorcycle. And on top of that is the white line you sure don't want to cross. Oh, because I saw, actually, I mean, it might be a little off your subject, but I, but look like up, the motorcycle, I, the motorcycle doom thing, I call it the doom of death, <laughs> and uh, I saw, actually saw Evil Knievel do that yeah. at the State Fair of Texas. There you go. And I think it was before he actually started jumping, you know, he was doing that, going around, around, and I looked down and I went, ain't no way. <laughs> I'm gonna do that, <laughs> you know. So, but anyway, so uh, 
Is this your second year, third year out here at the... Um... I was here two years ago, and then the next year it fell on the same weekend as my own students' art shows, and now... Oh, uh, well, you, you yeah. didn't have a choice. Yeah. You did not have a choice. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and how was the art show? How did that Oh, go? it was wonderful. That was the one that one of my students took best of show at 11 years old. And how many... Uh, he set a new uh, record. How many people participated in it? Oh, that? there was 400 entries. And he took what? Best of show at 11 oh. years old, competing all the way up through high school. Is he still speaking to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he did. Did that get too small? He got the biggest head, and his next creation was not all that great. But then he took a little time off at and my what insistence. And he created? What was it? Well, first he did Dock Off a of Gunsmoke. That Dock, was the good yeah. one. And then he come back and tried to do John Wayne with the big head, and it didn't work. It didn't work with John Wayne? He admits Wayne. it. Wow. And now he's back, and he's doing an incredible sculpture for the State Fair of Texas. He's doing it with Travis's letter and the Alamo oh, and the state of Texas all in the sculpture. So wonderful. it will be yeah. awesome. Well, I love, I love stories about the Alamo. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, although, I'll have to be honest, I've only been to the Alamo once. Uh, I went. I wanted to go. Were I'm you there on. the day it fell? Huh? And no, I went to the Alamo once, and I got there, and I found it so depressing. They're, fix, they're fixing that now. Are they? There's people reenacting out there. They yeah. have some statues. They're really bringing it to life and more of a celebration than in, of the Alamo yeah. and then, then of the actual well, fall. For me, so. for me, because all I can think about yeah. With the people who died. Oh, I know. You know, and uh, no matter what side of the fence you were on, on that, but it just, it just, you know. Boy. It was well, a terrible I, event. I, I, I waited on my whole life to get there, and then I got there, and it was, I, mean, I just personally, I was just <laughs> so depressed. And, uh, but it, you know, it's a, uh, it's a great place. It is. Uh, you know, and I think people should go see it. Because it's part of history. Yes, sir. It is part of history. And you are reserving, saving history by doing the stuff that you do. Well, one thing that was was mentioned of about seven artists, and thankfully I was including in that list of men, uh, was that I was sculpting this history exactly as it happens. Not changing go. it to save a buck or changing it for art's sake. Yeah. Like, uh, I did a sculpture of Bonnie McCarroll in there. She's bucking off a horse named Silverland and right on her head. And most of the weight of that horse is out in front of his back legs, which has his front legs are up in the air. And the, I had five foundries tell me, you cannot support that whole horse on one back leg in that position. You have to change it. And I said, no, that's history. You can't change that. It's gotta be the way it is. I like and that. I did finally find a foundry that took the chance and poured that and I've hauled uh, it all over the country it ain't going to break uh, but the boat three feet on that horse are off of the ground and most of his weights going forward so it, it was a difficult sculpture well, it took me almost wonderful. five years to yeah. get that one figured yeah, out I see one, Sam Houston did I see you with you me? did I Sam did. I'm so proud of that Sam Houston he came oh, out pretty I shiny like Sam. oh yeah, he yeah. Was, yeah he's standing and holding the Forbes Treaty which he signed there in Texas with 17 tribes of Indians yeah and they are going to do a huge walk-through sculpture garden and he's supposed to be part of that now I hadn't seen a contract yet but Keep your fingers crossed. Right. But he's going to be standing with that Forbes Treaty up over his head. And just off of that hill will be the 17 tribes. There'll be women and men and horses and kids. And they're supposed to do a water feature where the kids are kind of playing in the water and the horses are drinking from well, it. So tell, it will me be about, tell me about that sculpture that when you walk right up to your thing. It's on the on the roller on the. That's the Bonnie McCarroll. That's the that's the one you talked about. You wouldn't change it. Either. Right, right. Uh, right. That's from 1915, yeah. and the photographer was W. S. Bowman. But in the meantime, Doubleday bought out his studio, and he's putting his name on all the, the photos, which that's what was done, you know. Yeah. So you will see that picture with Doubleday and W.S. Bowman on it. But she was only 15 years old, and she made that ride on, or didn't make that ride on silver. 
we got the train going by, so everybody just stay with us. Yeah. I call it part of the atmosphere. That's right. There it is, That's part right. of the atmosphere. Well, I'll tell you what. We have got, we know you have to get back in there because you got folks coming, want to see your work, and I know, and you do such a good job talking about it. And I want to take this time to thank you for being a part of what we do here. On it's the a pleasure. And here at the Jubilee, and we'll probably see you next year. I hope so. And I'll come by the booth if you get a chance. We will. I'll tell we you will. stories about Yakima, Canut, and Garling oh, Kendall, yeah. and Ruth Roach, and all the old cowgirls. You know about them folks, don't you? I do. Oh, yeah. All right. I know. So, anyway, thank you thank very you. much. Thank we you. We appreciate Hi, you very much, and we'll, we'll see you on down the trail. All right. Welcome to the Cowboy Way, Cowboy Jubilee in Ardmore, Oklahoma, and I have the great honor of sitting here with a man who actually knew Fesh Parker. And, uh, knew him pretty well. Knew him pretty well. Yeah. Huh? All right. How was, how, tell me, uh, Darby Hinton, folks, and uh, Hi. welcome welcome to Ardmore, Oklahoma. Thank friend. you. Nice meeting you. Pleasure. We had, I'd seen you several years ago in McKinney, and we didn't get to meet them, but they made sure we met today. There we go. I did the background. Twenty years later. I, I, yeah. yeah, I did the background check on you, and uh, guess what? What came up? You won it in three states. <laughs> I was hoping we wouldn't talk about that. Oh, okay. Anyway, no, it's really great having you here, and it's great being here. You know. Uh, so, uh, tell me, you have a book out now about your experiences on. Yep. On the Daniel Boone Show. It's called Growing Up Israel, My Life in Pictures. Yeah. Because I put a whole lot of pictures in it. I got yeah. over 500. 500 pictures. Yeah, I'm a little dyslexic myself, so I don't like to read a lot. I like to look at pictures and kind of come up with the story myself. So, yeah. So I put a bunch so of pictures. So what, what you're telling me, what I'm getting out of this, okay. is that... The pictures tell the story. Absolutely. There if is. a picture's worth a thousand words, right. there's a lot of words in that book. Oh, yeah. Maybe I could do that. You know, because I've got a lot of pictures. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hello. Did, did someone say something bad about Steve McQueen over there or what? Okay. Did, did you mention this was a cowboy roundup? <laughs> it's a cowboy roundup, buddy. No, I, I no. The thing about it, how did you wind up? How old were you when you got on that show? Uh, well, when I got cast for it, I was five. By the time we started shooting the series, I was six. Six. And how long did the show run? Six years. My God, you grew up on uh, that. Six to twelve. Those formative years for us that remember the wet, wet, the. What was the bread? Wonder bread. Wonder bread. Yeah. Wonder bread. That's right. Well, it's a wonder I can remember anything at my age. Oh, there you go. Anyway, but the thing about it is, uh, when you were growing up, well, were you one of those kids that we all read about who was doing the, you, you'd work, doing it, and, and go to school and had classes and yeah. stuff right there on the set and stuff. Yeah, I had to have three hours of school a day. Yeah. On the set. Yeah. And at least 15 minute chunks. Yeah. And so. How did that do for you? I mean, did you make good grades? Were you able to make really learn? Did well, I didn't flunk out of that school, if that's what you mean. <laughs> oh, you passed. <laughs> I passed. When you're the only student in the class, you get them to grade on a curve, and you do pretty uh, good. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, no, I did good. I had good, uh, really nice school teachers that. And it was a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, which helped me. Yeah. Um, because, you know, back then people weren't even really recognizing dyslexia or, or if it might be. Oh, so you hardwood. wasn't joke. I thought it was a joke. You really had to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, the, so what can you do for that? I mean, what, how, how can what they can help you? What can you do for what, it? Can you do anything? I mean, can you help it make it better? Or no. Whatever? Well, you don't have to make it better. Uh, Edison was dyslexic. Um, oh. There were quite a few brilliant people out there that. Are just wired differently so it's not a make a better or make it worse oh, okay. it's just a different way people are wired and see things well i ask this out of pure ignorance you see because i don't know oh no no that's uh, fine yeah yeah well and i did a lot of research on it too later because my kids were diagnosed and i didn't know it and i went to the thing where they were being tested and was kind of looking over their shoulder and they would ask them these times how do you expect them to be able to do that and they started turning around looking at me, and that's when I figured out I was. Because with a one-on-one -on -one teacher, you don't notice it. Because verbally and everything we yeah. can do fine. 
But sometimes you're getting the things off of the blackboard and onto the paper. Right. Where you can have difficulties, where I have difficulties. Yeah. Wow. So that's what but you had people I working, helping you with that, right? Or how long did it take before you got actually got any help with that? To, to I didn't get help with it because I just that's just me. I live with it. That's what I do. Oh, okay. So yeah. you know, so. I didn't go into a, a job where that was part of what I had to do. So, so in the writing, yeah, has that affected your writing? I mean, yeah, that's why it's mostly pictures. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I'm getting the picture. There you see, he's I getting like the that. picture. He's <laughs> really got getting the it picture, now. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's wonderful. No, I'm learning. I'm learning. So, I mean, you know, it's good. I mean, uh, um, wow. That is something. See, I, I grew up with the thing of going to school. I was just lazy. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, wow. And so, anyway, you grew up in California, yep. Hollywood area. And so, when Daniel Boone ended for you, how was life then? I mean, was it auditions and going to different places, or did you walk that's, away from that's it? That's part of the acting is the auditions. Yeah. You yeah. got to go through and do that. Yeah. So is acting, is that what you really wanted to do all your life? It's what I seem to do. Um, you know, a few times I was going to walk away from it, and then someone would call me up and go, you know, I got a part, you want to do it? And I'd be yeah. okay. Yeah. So I just kept doing it. You know, I took time off to go to school. I wanted to try to see what it was like to be, quote, unquote, normal for a while. Yeah. So I sent myself off to school up in Switzerland and, you know, oh, to really, really get away yeah. from it. And I went to college on a ship that went around the world while you were studying on it. And I took three academic voyages around the world doing that. So you were able to take a lot of pictures. I, yeah, actually, I was taking more video back then, and video. I don't have that many. But. Video, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But no, because I was thinking, you know, that was traveling like that. You could take pictures all around. And... Well, that was the wonderful thing about studying on a ship, is that you would study other cultures like Egypt. Okay. And then the ship would pull into Alexandria, and you'd get off, and you'd go see the pyramids. You'd go see what you were learning so about. So you're actually seeing everything. And yeah. I studied international law, and we would go to different courts and, and yeah. talk to different governments. And it's it's really interesting once you get away from the American news, and you see the uh, news from other countries and what they're... What they think is really going on yeah. and stuff. And well, it can be quite different. Some of that fake news going on. <laughs> All over the world. All over the world. So you uh, you talked about movies now. Yeah. So w what movies can we look for to find you in? Actually, i got three movies coming out this year. Wonderful. So one is called Wild Faith that won the Burbank International Film Festival's Best Faith-Based Film Award. Okay. That's a great little uh, right around Civil War type story. Mm -hmm. Then I have Bill Tillman and the Outlaws, which I'm very proud of. I've heard about of. that now. That's a, I've that's heard a, about that. It's yeah. a great little one. That's, you know, Bill Tillman meets Hollywood. And uh, that's going great. And then I just got through filming a Hallmark Christmas movie. Okay. And that's going to be called Christmas Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses. I love the title. I love the title. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, that's great. Or, I mean, now, the characters that you're playing in this, are, the, are these more like based on Western style or just The regular? Hallmark one isn't. The other two are. Okay. Bill Tillman and Wild Yeah, Wild I knew Faith the Bill there. Tillman one. Now, uh, Johnny Crawford, is he in? I, yeah, you know, I, I got involved early with it when they gave me the script, and I loved it. And I told a bunch of my friends, come on, you got to come do this with me. So we got Johnny Crawford on there. We got Bobby Carradine. Don Collier, Lana Wood. Lana, yeah, yeah, I know, I know who that is. Yeah, yeah a lot of a lot of my good friends came along and yeah. uh, did parts. So y'all had some fun. Oh, absolutely. Plus, Always you got got fun. to be in a movie. Yeah, and uh, but that's great. At least you keep it active. Yep. Got a great attitude about you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh man, this is great. I want you to know I really enjoyed talking to you, and I want to thank you for taking this time out. To, to be with us, man. Well, I thank you. Yeah. It was good nice talking to you. you. Pleasure meeting you and, and everything. And good luck with the book. Well, and, thank you very and, much. And selling your book and hope people come around and see you. Come see this they, guy. Yeah, you can go on DarbyHinton.com. And uh, 
I got a general store on there. They can get pictures from the right. Daniel Boone are you, show or other you things. Are like on Facebook or any I'm of on that? Facebook, too, yeah, Darby Henry. Yeah, people can find you on Facebook. Yeah. All right, yeah. very good. Yeah. Very good. Look for him on Facebook and, and everything, and we'll, we'll see you all on down the road. Well, Scudder, it's about time to put the curtain down on the Cowboy Way Jubilee here in Ardmore, Oklahoma. It's time to head to the Hacienda, huh? Well, head them up and move them out. Head them up and move them out. Where's Clint? He's in Hollywood. He's in Hollywood. Still making movies. I, I, I guess he'll make some more. I don't yeah, know. Well, I don't know. I read a thing the other day. He's ready, he's ready to uh, hang it up. He said, uh, I'm getting ready to get out of this. Well, get out of this town. He's 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 got a he's done some good work over the past. And yes, he has. In fact, I have his latest movie at home, and I haven't uh, seen it yet. Uh, we haven't. I've yet. seen it. Uh, interesting movie. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, it was it was fun this year. We got to. Well, there's a lot of people we didn't get a chance to to talk to because they were so busy talking to the fans. Right. Here. So, but that thing is good. That's they good. Yeah. The fans. And this is what it's for. It's That's fun. right. That's right. And uh, they got to do it. And we, we know all them guys. We've interviewed them before. Most of them. And That's right. So, but anyway, it was great. We got to interview some people we had never met before. That's true. And I've had a great time. And just about ready to hit the trail. You hit the trail. You headed back down south? I am headed back into Texas. We'll make it, and we'll do this again another day. Yeah, another time. Well, listen, I want to thank you for taking the time to come out here and uh, hang out with us. And, uh, well, it was it was a task, but I did it anyway. And meet some of these wonderful people. And uh, so uh, I will, uh, what, what we're going to do is just say, Adios, amigos, and we'll see you later down the trail. All right. All right. Till we meet again, good luck, God bless, and we'll see you at the crossroads. Let's go, Daniel.